to the 18th episode in our AI and You podcast series. Today is Tuesday, November 17th, 2020, and I'm your host, Vikar Saidi. I'm a computer scientist and engineer, a lecturer and a consultant. I'm also the author of several books. My most recent book is about artificial intelligence and is titled The Genome Affair. The Genome Affair is a work of speculative fiction. It examines what the world might be like if some of the more extraordinary capabilities forecast to be realized in AI over the next 20 to 30 years were actually realized today. Given the growing list of frightening existential threats humankind now faces, the book pays particular attention to the impact AI is expected to have on world affairs. The book is available in ebook format for those who prefer to read on a digital device, but it's also available in a high quality paperback edition. The Genome Affair is available on Amazon, so I hope you'll take the time to read it and to leave a review. Book reviews are very helpful for writers. I'm available to give talks on artificial intelligence and its related technologies and on the impact AI is expected to have on our world. If you'd like to get in touch with me to arrange a web-based event or consulting meeting with your company or organization, you can find my contact info in the podcast notes below. And now, on to today's podcast. In our last podcast, episode 17, I narrated the first few chapters of my book, The Genome Affair. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you will continue to read further. I plan to do more such readings in the future. Please drop me a note and let me know what you think. In today's podcast, episode 18, I'll be talking about the danger of misusing artificial intelligence enabled surveillance technologies and how they can lead to the rise of digital tyranny or datocracy. I'll also be talking about an exciting new AI agent known as GPT-3 from a San Francisco company called OpenAI. Let's get started. Surveillance technologies enabled by artificial intelligence can strengthen democracies when balanced between the surveillance of the general society and the simultaneous surveillance of the state. But if these technologies are exclusively focused on the surveillance of society, as they are currently being used today, they invariably strengthen the hand of the authoritarian or dictator, while simultaneously serving to disable or marginalize democracy. We are witnessing this phenomenon unfold in China as they dramatically increase the surveillance of their society by deploying hundreds of millions of cameras that are enabled by facial recognition, AI. This AI can recognize any face in one-tenth of a second. The state can then raise or lower each person's social credit score that affects every aspect of their lives, from how much they pay for groceries, to the price of their metro ticket, to which jobs and universities they and their families can apply to. Five years ago, China was essentially a nascent observer in the field of artificial intelligence. But today, they're the world's number two in this critical technology, behind only the US. The CCP, the Chinese Communist Party's strategic analysis and assessment of likely scenarios for the future, concluded that AI is already a crucial area in which they must not only participate, but must lead. The consequences of not doing so would likely leave a nation open and exposed to 21st century neo-colonialism and subjugation. The rise of digital tyranny, or datocracy, in which data and artificial intelligence are all that are required to control entire populations, was something that the Chinese state wanted to understand intimately. It has become essential for countries to take part in the fourth industrial revolution, Industry 4.0, because the consequences of being left behind 
are likely to be even more severe than the consequences of being left behind following the First Industrial Revolution. Following the First Industrial Revolution, the West surged ahead in all critical fields needed for global domination by developing a culture that established the primacy of military, industrial, scientific, and technological prowess. Mystic, M-I-S-T-C, military, industrial, scientific, and technological culture. China also suffered under imperial domination and subjugation, but they have resolved to prevent this from ever happening to them again. This time, they have ascended to be one of the dominant powers that many across the world now fear. But the political class in most countries tend to be reactive rather than strategic and forward-looking. They do not plan. Rather, they assume blue skies will last into perpetuity, and they respond only after the fact, when there is no longer an opportunity for corrective measures. In the meantime, it will be critical for AI leaders around the world to be very careful about the AI they develop and whom they share their technology with. It is very unlikely that once a society falls under the jurisdiction of such a surveillance state, that they will ever be able to shed this digital tyranny and autocracy. Let's turn our discussion to a fascinating new AI agent known as GPT-3. GPT-3, developed by OpenAI of San Francisco, is an AI agent specializing in language generation. This agent has 175 billion language parameters and is the most advanced language generation technology today. GPT-3 can write emails, computer algorithms, advertisements for use in digital media marketing, plot lines for stories and video games, as well as original pose, prose and poetry in the style of any author, living or otherwise. Its potential is truly limitless. Another similar language generation AI agent from a company called Narrative Science has an AI agent called Quill that can absorb enormous volumes of data on the performance of a portfolio of financial securities and then process this data to write English language investment summar summaries for investors. Alan Turing, the godfather of computer science and artificial intelligence, warned in 1953 that machines might one day think in a way that so closely resembles humans that we might not be able to distinguish a human from an impersonation by a machine. It does seem that this day is here. In this imitation game, as Turing called it, we may no longer be able to discern whether we are interacting with human or machine. We have taken a significant step towards artificial general intelligence, the point of singularity when AI and humans are equivalent in their intellectual ability. The expansion of the internet, the staggering growth in computing power and machine pedagogy, such as deep learning neural networks, has enabled the rise of general AI, such as OpenAI's GPT-3 and DeepMind's AlphaZero. OpenAI was founded in 2015 with a billion dollars in startup capital and is committed through its governance to build safe and beneficial artificial intelligence. OpenAI is run by Sam Altman, who previously ran the tech incubator Y Combinator, which amongst 2,000 startups spawned Airbnb, Dropbox, and Stripe. Along with many other science and technology thought leaders, Altman believes that artificial intelligence will impact individuals, families, communities, companies, customers, suppliers, society, and world affairs more than the agricultural revolution, the scientific revolution, and the previous three industrial revolutions combined. These three phases of industrial revolution the three major transformations denoted by 
the arrival of steam engines, electricity, and computing, enabled humankind to overcome its physical limitations. But in this fourth industrial revolution, Industry 4.0, artificial intelligence and its enabling technologies, including biotechnology and quantum computing, will for the first time enable humans to broadly overcome the limitations of their organic intelligence. This will have many benefits. It can help us to understand some of our more complex problems, including climate change and the containment, management, and treatment of infectious disease and many other diseases, possibly including aging. Some academics and philosophers have gone so far as to say that GPT-3 has begun to demonstrate fundamental elements of consciousness. The use of this system by about 2,000 different organizations during its development and proof of concept is being carefully monitored by OpenAI's R&D team. So if it shows signs of antisocial behavior or other dangerous, undesirable characteristics or uses, it can quickly be modified or corrected. Although GPT-3 does not currently understand what it is producing, this is likely to change in the future. At present, it has a very high degree of competence without the necessity or even the burden of comprehension. But if not carefully managed, it will exacerbate so many of today's problems, including income and wealth inequality, and the subjugation of so many of our fellow citizens around the world, something we experienced following the first industrial revolution and the resulting intense concentration of power and wealth. It will result in the uncontrollable proliferation of fake news and videos and will lead to the erosion of democracy and the subsequent rise of authoritarianism and digital tyranny. Thank you for spending some time with me. I'm trying to follow the TED Talk format, and so I'm keeping these podcasts to about 20 minutes. Let me know what you think. I hope you'll find these insights into artificial intelligence helpful, and I hope you'll read my new book, The Genome Affair. It's on Amazon. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, then, this has been the AI and You podcast with author Vikar Saidi. Thank you.